Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Tuesday, and uh, let's chat for a minute. I want to talk about things that will not help our situation, and I wish people would quit it. Because I think as we get driven more and more to a sense of desperation, people become more emotional, their fight or flight instincts kick in, and they go back to kind of their base programming. So if if people have really shitty ideas, it'll start coming out and flowing, and people will think it's all very reasonable because they don't know what else to do. So let's talk about uh, three different things. This was actually inspired by uh, Gab, uh, people who are styling themselves Christian nationalists. And honestly, the more I thought about it, the more I I just concluded they are just as big of a problem as the leftists. Uh, There are days when I'm really not sure what annoys me most, uh, the machinations of the leftists or the people who have learned the exact wrong lesson from the leftists. Because the solution to the rise of authoritarianism in our society is not authoritarianism of a different variety. And that's essentially what these Christian nationalists are calling for. And I think I understand how people get drawn into that kind of thinking because as we watch our non-functional society get worse and worse and we see authoritarians getting their way, we think, oh, well, we'll just toss out uh, what uh, we used to have and we'll just have authoritarianism of a different stripe because I'm on this team and maybe I'll do better that way. But that is not a good response, and I I do what I can in my videos and and my day-to-day life to discourage that, but I'm only one person, so I hope other people, if you happen to agree with me, would pick up this particular mantle. Because we don't need more authoritarianism. We don't need a different kind of authoritarianism. The proper task ahead of us is to dismantle the authoritarianism and get the people who think this way out of positions of power and hold them legally accountable for their deeds. Now, instead of fighting for the Constitution, I see an an American culture and a restoration of the Republic. What I'm actually seeing is an increasing number of people, especially on Gap, calling for a Christian society. And a few of them are declaring they would even prefer a monarchy, provided it was headed by a Christian, over the Constitution and a Republic. Now, I lack the uh, ability to leave stupidity alone, uh, so I speak up when I see these things and I make comments and I say that, you know, these so-called Christian societies of the past, they were not perfect. In fact, they were so flawed, they had to change because as they were then, it was completely inadequate to the problems faced by the people of that time, and it's certainly inadequate today. Now, as for monarchy, anyone who's an American and is foolish enough to think that would be an improvement has not only failed to learn anything from our history and history in general, but they are obviously not taking note of how the elites of today are behaving because you're asking for more of that kind of behavior with less accountability. I mean, if, if you suddenly had a monarchy, where, where do you think that monarch would come from exactly? I don't think it's something that we, the people, would be electing. So, you know, think about that, you monarchists. Now, the Great Reset, uh, the rise of collectivism and all sorts of authoritarianism, this seems to be headed into one direction. I've been observing this for quite some time. I think it is the establishment of feudalism 2.0. And this desire for monarchy, or at least what people imagine a monarchy would be like, this helps the very people who have been tyrannizing over everyone. I mean, you want to talk about whose side you're on. People need to start thinking a little bit more seriously about what it is they're advocating for. And this happens when people lose sight of what made the good things in their life and the good things of this country possible, and they're just looking for a place of safety, and they're looking in all the wrong places. A republic is a system of governance that specifically puts limits on the state to what it can do to individuals. This gets in the way of authoritarian ambitions, provided it's enforced. That's why I advocate for it. And the concept of freedom of religion, it's not only what has enabled our society to cope with this mishmash of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Native American beliefs, paganism, etc., 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 but this is also the concept that enables Christians to get along with each other. You take that away, you damage it, and declare that you're going to have a Christian society, by definition, 
that is going to seek to destroy the natural rights of non-Christians because they're not part of the club. And it opens the door to conflict amongst Christians. They would be at each other's throats in record time. You doubt me? Reread the history about the Reformation when the Catholic Church separated from the Lutherans and the Protestants and all these other different uh, Christian sects started to developing and they weren't fully aligned with the mainstream and everybody was persecuting each other. It just it is not in anyone's interest to see that kind of society arise again. And anytime you have a society where there's one true faith, whether it's Christianity, other forms of monotheism, or even the really militant atheism who thinks that their way of thinking is the only way, there's going to be controversy about who is and is not part of the club, on what grounds and by what authority that decision is made. And we haven't even touched on the issue of how you would need to deal with the unbelievers. Now, for the next issue that I think really does not help anything, it's these ostriches who are sticking their heads in the sand and think that other people should deal with it. And of course, people become these ostriches through stress, fear, or in a general shrinking away from responsibility. They give in to these things and they don't seem to realize that that very impulse is what helped create the mess we are currently in. Now, just making that statement and saying that the people who are so victimized are actually culpable and responsible and part of the problem, that has gotten me into trouble with people in the past, and I'm sure it will in the present and into the future. But someone being angry with what I said doesn't mean that I'm wrong. I think their anger is rooted in a desire to avoid unpleasantness at all costs and cling to the illusion that everything will be fine if we just let it be fine. And if people were just nicer to each other, this wouldn't happen. I mean, it is so detached from all reality. And it is a symptom that someone is aware that they, at least on some level, they're attempting to evade their duty as a citizen and they resent being called out on it by anybody and so they lash out at the person who's saying uh things have to be done and you need to be part of that rather than attending to their own flaws now the bottom line is that it is not someone else's responsibility to save us and none of us can rightly excuse ourselves from rising to the occasion and opposing tyranny People can and do come together for common cause, but that act requires each individual who's involved to recognize and act upon their obligation to be an active participant and a shaper of the world. And that's what we have. We want people who want to sit back, just kind of observe, not be a part of it. And then we have people who realize, okay, we are actually involved. This, we are alive. This is our world. We need to do something. Now, if you are not willing to defend your life, your culture, your children, and their future, then how is it someone else's job to do the work for you? By what right are you entitled to collect the benefits of other people sacrificing for you? Why is it okay for someone else to face the music and make the difficult decisions and think about how to fix these things while you just strive to stay shielded from the consequences and hope no one notices you while quietly cheering people on from the sideline? I mean, who do you think you are? And I've yet to find a good answer for that. And I'm not holding my breath that anyone's going to come up with that one. It just comes to people restating that they're too stressed or they're too afraid or they have so much to lose and that's why they can't or won't do anything. This is the reaction of a child, not an adult. And the purpose of childhood is to prepare people to become adults. And when we avoid that transformation or reject it or seek to go along with what that means, it is a rejection of nature itself. It is a rejection of our personal de destinies. And honestly, it is letting down our ancestors. Because guess what? The lives we were told we were going to have as children, we are not going to have those lives. It is not going to happen. The world we were prepared for no longer exists and no amount of wishing and looking back and hand wringing is going to change that. What will help is accepting the reality of what has occurred and then actively charting a course that promotes rather than betrays our values. Yes, it's hard. And I'm sure we would all much rather be lying on a beach, drinking Mai Tais and watching the waves come in. But that's not the task we have been given. And it's past time to get to work and deal with the things that we should be dealing with. Now, the third issue that has really been getting in the way of making any improvement in our society is seeking reconciliation when it's time to pursue victory. It is impossible to coexist with someone who desires that your way of life, your culture, your beliefs cease to exist. 
When the goal is your destruction, whether it's destruction of the spirit or of the body, there is no room for compromise. There is no common ground. You cannot reconcile with someone who doesn't want you to be who and what you are. You, they've made themselves your enemy. You have to treat them accordingly and try to gain victory. And people are in denial of this plain reality, and they go into a horrifying fog of cognitive dissonance when you show them historical examples of current trends and then the consistently bad outcome over and over again. It's a very noticeable pattern. But especially in the United States, we don't want to believe that there's any such thing as beliefs that are so incompatible that they can't coexist peacefully within our society. It goes against all we were taught, everything our teachers said, everything our parents said, everything religious leaders said. But it was an illusion. In order to coexist, the people who disagree with each other have to consent to live and let live without seeking to interfere with or change the other party, providing no one is breaking each other's bones or picking their pockets. The authoritarians we are facing today, they want our money, they want our autonomy, they want to dictate our belief system, and they are perfectly happy to deny us employment, threaten us with legal action, and yes, literally break our bones if we don't comply. That isn't the mode of someone who's going to seek to coexist or who will co agree to any terms that would make coexistence possible. It is the mantra of a conqueror, and that is what makes the authoritarians enemies. And when someone is de determined to be your enemy, as these people are, don't make excuses for them. Just accept the reality of what is. Adapt and act accordingly. Yes, it's sad. It would be better if all these authoritarians would get off their perches and realize that what they were looking for is not only destructive to their opposition, it is even destructive to themselves. And it would be so much better if they would choose to be at peace with the rest of us. Yes, it would. But we can't control their choices, and they are not listening. And if civil argumentation was going to be the solution to the problem, we would have gotten results by now. We would have been able to negotiate. Instead, we just have more and more encroachment on our lives. I think the time has passed for talking, and it's time to just engage in the political process so overwhelmingly that we are able to root the authoritarians out of our midst. So stop looking for common ground. There's no common ground between you and the person who wants to take away all that you have and all that you are. And now for far too long, people who say they value freedom have been on the defensive. They've allowed themselves to be the punching bags of authoritarians, and they have not played to win. And now they've become defeatist, saying nothing can be done and we just have to resign ourselves to tyranny. No. Stop it. Stop it right now. Think of Sun Tzu, who is the, to the person to whom the art of war is credited. Sun Tzu said that wars are won in their temples before they're ever fought. The demoralization process we're, that we're experiencing, it is just that. It is attempting to defeat us in our temples, the temples of our spirit, before the actual first punch is ever thrown. So reclaiming our spirit is the first step to defeating the authoritarians. Next, it comes having concrete goals that are achievable and an overarching vision, which should also be achievable. Now, the goals can come in forms of immediate political and legal steps that we can take today and keep taking. This helps do damage control, and this helps us shore up our own position. But the vision, the vision I would like to see people pursue is a restoration of the values of the Declaration of Independence, the restoration of the Constitution, with a few reforms added to it that further restrict the state and punish those who get out of line. But it all comes down to us walking our talk. I've never had much use for what people say. But their actions are a different matter, and our deeds tell the story of who and what we really are, and it's past time to show the authoritarians what's what. So, please share this message if you agree. Put it on your social media. I try to spread it far and wide. I would really appreciate it if you would help it out, not because it's so much about what I'm saying, but I think what I'm saying is what a lot of people have in their heads, and I think it would be very useful if those of us who do think alike would start making that voice heard. So make your own videos. Reach out to other people who are like-minded. Start networking. Start taking practical steps. Let's do what we can in our own individual ways. Collectively, it does add up to a great big result if we just stick with it. But that's all that I have to say for now. If you would like to discuss this matter further, please come see me on Discord at Blackbirds Brew. There's a link to join in the description box below, and I'd be very happy to have you. We have an entire channel that's devoted to current events and politics. So uh, any of your philosophical suggestions, any of your ideas about policies we connect now, further reforms in the future, 
put it all in that channel, unload, vent, let's get to talking and maybe we can knock out some solutions and start becoming more of a force in society to where we can have a world in which we will actually be able to exist and thrive. But that does it for now. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I'm <laughs> sorry.